I'm Martha Compton, Director at Florida Panhandle Technical College. I graduated from Chipley High School in 1983, born and raised in Washington County. So I'm certified to teach at a technical college and I'm very proud of that. After uh, I came here, I realized that this was the place I needed to be. Not only do we help people, we make generational changes. When we get a student certified in the industry and they get a higher salary, it changes the livelihood of their children. We make great changes and they're all generational. I'm James Sanders. I'm a graduate of the Florida Panhandle Technical College 2013 in the Network Support Services Program. The courses that you learn um, here in school offer you the basics. You don't actually learn the job until you're in the field, but this definitely teaches you all those basics that they don't teach you in the field. It gives you a, a good solid sound structure for the basics of, of whatever particular field that you're going into. I'm Donna Richard, a graduate from the Technical College. The Technical College for me was a turning point. It was a turning point in my life. It opened the doors for me to provide a much more comfortable lifestyle for my, myself and my two children. Hi, I'm Landon Fries. I'm a graduate 2012 for the Florida Panhandle Technical College. I graduated in 2012 from Law Enforcement and Corrections. If you're looking for a place to go to school, it's a great place. Even the admin is awesome. They allowed me to pay block by block after high school versus the whole lump sum at first, which was a huge benefit for me. It was a lot easier to deal with, paying 200 bucks instead of 2,000 bucks. Everybody up there is great in what they do. Hi, I'm Shirley Thompson. I'm the Student Affairs Manager here at Florida Panhandle Technical College. There are a lot of opportunities here at the Technical College and one of our duties here as a student services and financial aid staff here in Student Affairs is to find out where you belong is your career goal. My name is Bradley Goodson and I'm a 2014 graduate of the Florida Panhandle Technical College of the Drafting Program. I was working at a local company in Bonifay and uh, we lost a contract with another company. Uh, ended up getting uh, laid off and I just knew there was not many options where I was at at that time and I uh, went up to the school and talked to a couple people and uh, found the drafting program and uh, met Miss Taylor on a Thursday, started the next Monday and here I am. <laughs> I'm Anthony Smith, I'm a 2014 graduate from Florida Penhandle Technical College in the drafting program. I was working uh, with a telephone company bearing telephone lines and just like Brad got them uh, laid off and uh, I had known about the technical college for a while. I was going for the pharmacy tech but uh, they didn't I think it was like August or something was their enrollment and uh, the technical drafting was do, uh, was open enrollment any time so and architectural was something that interested me so I joined and uh, actually fell in love with the mechanical side of it. Education is core to our economy but in order to guide our educational systems and maximize future income, we must understand the misalignment between education and our workforce. In my pursuit of higher education, I have earned two bachelor's degrees, two master's degrees, and I'm working on a PhD. In total, this has cost me over $150,000. I've done all this because I believe formal education is important. Part of this belief came from seeing charts like this, presenting a correlation between higher degrees and higher income, showing on average that a person with a college degree earns far more money than the average person without a high school diploma. This perceived higher earnings for having a four-year degree has fueled a college for all philosophy, causing educators and parents to encourage going to the university, any university, to major in anything in pursuit of future job security, 
social mobility, and financial prosperity. This philosophy has increased college enrollment, resulting in 66% of high school graduates in this country enrolling in higher education right after high school. That's two out of three. Initially, they are deemed the successful ones. But what you won't see advertised is the reality that most drop out, and only a quarter of those that enroll will finish a bachelor's degree. Only after these few graduate do many of them start exploring careers. It is here that they discover that their degree may not have prepared them for the world of work. You may be well educated, but not every degree is direct preparation for employment. This misalignment between degrees and job skills causes half of university graduates to be underemployed in what are called gray-collar jobs, taking positions that do not require the education they have received at a cost that is more than they can afford. I got involved here at the Technical College, which was then Washington Homes Technical Center, uh, four years ago. This is my fourth year here. I started out as a classroom teacher, was a classroom teacher for 33 years, um, and uh, enjoyed every minute of it. So I enjoyed having the opportunity to help students. When I had the opportunity to come here at the uh, Technical College, I was able to actually be involved in the process of getting students on the right track of trying to find a career. I'm Melissa Watford, the instructor at the Patient Care Technician Program at the Florida Panhandle Technical College. I had a good friend that suggested I come over here and apply for the job, the position. I've been teaching at the Florida Pennington Technical College for about five years now. The most rewarding thing I would say about being an instructor is seeing your students' eyes light up when we're in the nursing environment and knowing that they're caring for patients and caring for their lives. It just does something to my heart. Hi, my name is Misty Sasser and I'm a 2013 graduate from the Patient Care Technician Program at the Florida Panhandle Technical College. I have a paralyzed dad who I've been helping take care of for about five years now, so I know how important it is to have a good nurse helping your family members. So I decided to work to become a nurse so that I could provide the care for other people's families that I would want for mine. Hi, I'm Nathan Toro. I graduated from the Florida Panhandle Technical College from the Horticulture Program and the Heavy Equipment Program. I had an interest in horticulture and heavy equipment technology when I was younger, when I was in high school and I went to Poplar Springs and I was interested in going to Florida Panhandle Technical College to get a career in horticulture or heavy equipment technology. Conventional wisdom suggests that a university degree guarantees a higher salary. But with rising education costs, a shrinking job market, and the oversaturation of some academic majors in the workforce, this old advice is now a myth for a majority of students. The economy and the world have dramatically changed. Over the last three generations, we've gone from 13% of the population stepping into a college classroom to 60% attending some form of higher education. In 1960, when taking into account all jobs in the American economy, 20% required a four-year degree or higher, 20% were technical jobs requiring skilled training, and 60% were classified as unskilled. But what's the right percentage to meet the labor market demand for tomorrow? In 2018, Harvard University predicts only 33% of all jobs will require a four-year degree or more, while the overwhelming majority will be middle-skilled jobs requiring technical skills and training at the credential or associate degree level. A four-year degree may have many benefits, but think about the people you know who, from an economic perspective, inefficiently spent time and money to get a degree that perhaps they didn't really need for the career they are in. The true ratio of jobs in our economy is one, two, seven. For every occupation that requires a master's degree or more, two professional jobs require a university degree, and there are over half a dozen jobs requiring a one-year certificate or two-year degree. And each of these technicians are in very high-skilled areas that are in great demand. This ratio is fundamental to all industries. It was the same in 1950, the same in 1990, and will be the same in 2030. The hope for encouraging university education is that as the number of university trained workers increases, the demand for their services in the workplace will increase as well. Unfortunately, this is not so. The whole pie may get bigger as the labor force and the economy grows, but the ratio will not change. The reality is, there will not be more professional jobs available within the labor market and some professional jobs have been replaced by technology or are being outsourced.
You know, being the director here it isn't about being a director of a school. It's about providing resources and assistance for my community, the county that I was born and raised in. It means a lot to me to be able to provide to give back. What's different in K-12 education is five years down the road the student may come back and go, thank you so much for what you did for me, but we see an immediate gratitude where uh, I could have never done this without you. We do see those generational changes. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here to do. We're here to assist students in a any way possible uh, to help them survive and, and to be financially stable and to, you know, to work in our community and to, to be the very best that they can be, which makes us so much better as a community. Hi, I'm Jessica Collins and I'm a 2013 graduate from the Pharmacy Tech Program from Panhandle Technical College. I found out about the college when I was attending high school at Graceville High School. I'm a graduate from there and I found out as I was a student there. I graduated from Graceville High School in 2006. Um, immediately after that, I went to Chipola College and received my two-year degree from there, but it wasn't something that really fit for me that I wanted to do. So I decided to do something else and I knew about the, the Panhandle Technical College and they had a pharmacy tech program and that fit something better educational wise and career wise that I wanted to do. Hi, I'm Josh Straub and I'm a 2009 graduate from the electrician program here at the Florida Panhandle Technical College. There was a lot of pressures on me in high school and going to college wasn't a good choice for me because of all the pressures that were already on me in high school and after a few years of being out there on my own working in the workforce with no skills it really changed my mind to want to uh, make a difference for myself. I knew about the technical college. I wasn't ever really interested in going to college. I graduated from Holmes County High School in 2001. The only thing that I wanted to do was just get out of the house, get a job, didn't care about school. About a month after I graduated high school, I started working at Walmart. And I was at Walmart for five and a half years. Not really making a whole lot of money. Really regretted that I didn't go to school because I could have been finished with school. <laughs> well, I met my boyfriend. Well, actually, we're married now. And uh, he actually encouraged me to quit Walmart. His mother, she was a drafter for a surveying company and she had told me that she took the drafting class at the technical college. I quit Walmart, I went up to the technical college, asked the ladies up there for information. I was worried about the cost. They explained the Pell Grant to me, pretty much guided me through it, and about two weeks later I, I started the class. Well-intentioned attempts to send more and more students straight to the university will not change the types of jobs that dominate our economy, nor will a college for all mentality mask these labor market realities. The college for all rhetoric that has been so much a part of the current education reform movement is often interpreted as university for all. This message needs to be significantly broadened to a post high school credential for all. Students at various educational levels have left school without employable skills, setting up our children for failure, costing them and taxpayers millions. All while the labor market is desperate for highly trained, skilled technicians. So how do you position yourself for high-wage, in-demand jobs? Let's say you were considering a career as either an electrician or a business manager. You would find that the average annual income for electricians is 51000 only about half of the 105000 average wage for management occupations. So at first glance, it looks as if getting a bachelor's degree in business is a no-brainer. But adding skills and ability into the picture adds a whole new dynamic. What if you have the potential to become an excellent electrician? but lack the skills and ability to be an excellent manager. Then you should be looking at projected incomes towards the bottom of the pay scale for managers and towards the top for electricians. You would then discover that electricians near the top of the pay scale make around 86,000, far higher than the income of a manager near the bottom of the pay scale at 52,000. Now this is just one example, but the concept is true throughout all industries. The claim that you will make more money with an increased amount of education is not necessarily inaccurate, it's just incomplete. That advice is based just on the averages, but no one is perfectly average. Everyone has unique skills, talents, and interests. In fact, the income for the top individuals in a wide variety of skilled jobs that require an industry credential or two-year degree 
is far higher than the average income for many occupations that require a four-year degree. Here at the Technical College, we have dual enrolled students, which actually means that we can have high school students that have courses at their high, home high school, but also dually enroll here in a career and technical education. And the exciting thing about that is that they can get a career, get industry certification while they're in high school, and is at no cost to them. It's absolutely free. We can actually talk with a guidance counselor and we can uh, make a plan for that student to be able to achieve that. Dual enrollment for me was perfect for my age, for my income, for everything I had going on. Dual enrollment was, was totally free if you're, in a, you're a high school student. Dual enrollment helped me in two different ways. First of all, it was free. I didn't have to spend any money to figure out if this was something I wanted to do or if it's something I didn't want to do. But dual enrollment helped me in this way because I could figure out if I wanted to become involved in horticulture or heavy equipment technology. And then I could go to the technical center and meet all the students, see all the programs, and get a make a decision as a, at a young age about what I wanted to do as a career. I decided to look for some financial aid, if I could get any. They have an awesome student services at the school. I was able to quickly, within a week, get all the information in. They asked me, they told me what I needed. Got all the information in, and, and it covered everything. And next week I started, no time at all. Well, when I was 14, I was basically told by the SRO, which is Jenkins, uh, Justin Jenkins, he told me, you're going to be in an uh, explorer program. I said, no, I'm not. Well, a few weeks went by, and I decided to go ahead and do it. After a little while doing it, I fell in love with it. I continued to do it through my senior year. It eventually ran as the president of the Explorers for two years. About my ninth or tenth grade year, I decided that law enforcement is where I wanted to be, and that's what I wanted to do. Well, while I was in high school, I was an explorer. Um, I found out through them that they offer the dual enrollment for corrections, not the law enforcement. I couldn't take the law enforcement due to the age. Started the corrections in high school and figured it'd be a good way to start. Um, figured it'd look better on me to have both, both credentials under my belt. So I went ahead and took the corrections part of it and then immediately after took the crossover to law enforcement. All the instructors that I had going through the technical college was fantastic. Um, a lot of the ones I had were actively working in the job. They had a lot of real world experience and they could answer pretty much every question we had. And if they didn't have the answer for it, they found it pretty quick. Um, Greg runs a great program over there and Brandon helping him, it's a, it's a great team over there. Our main goal is to supply um, the need in our community, whatever the businesses need. And we will listen to the businesses and actually uh, provide the employees that they need in all the aspects as far as an employee is concerned. Um, if it needs be that in a particular time frame we need um, a certain area that uh, needs specific skilled workers, we're even willing to look into that and seeing if there's another area of a program that we can actually offer here at the Technical College. Our world has changed, and in this new economy, the university degree is no longer the guaranteed path towards financial success as it was for previous generations. And even if you do earn one, that education alone may not be enough. In today's highly technical, knowledge-based economy, having hands-on skills and perfecting what you're good at can be more valuable than getting a degree in something simply to get one. Employers want to know what you can do and what you can do well, not just what degree hangs on your wall. Since new and emerging occupations in every industry now require a combination of academic knowledge and technical ability, we need to ensure that we're also guiding students towards careers and not just to the university. So before enrolling in classes or deciding what you're going to do next in your life, step one is self-exploration. In addition to your interests, really analyze your talents and strengths. Step two is career exploration. Understand the jobs available, the income ranges they pay, and evaluate the skills they require. Identifying an area that appeals to your interests, skills, and the labor market may be your first career. And then you can develop a tentative career plan, complete with multiple training and education options. The key is to align your interests and abilities with your first career choice and the education and training you'll need to receive. This alignment will help bring your future into focus and ensure your position at the top of the pay scale in your chosen career. What all this data shows is that success in the new economy is as much about acquiring the knowledge, skills, and abilities needed for in-demand occupations as it is to be well-educated. Both paths may work for you, but education combined with technical training 
is how you ultimately secure a competitive advantage in the new economy. I mean, I would highly recommend it looking at all the careers at the Technical College um, in today's world. There's not a lot of jobs available. Most jobs are uh, career and technical oriented. Um, most jobs that make good money are career and technical oriented. I feel like when I get involved in Skills USA, when I was the 2009 to 2010 Vice President of Florida Skills USA, I was able to get groomed to uh, get personal skills, job skills, got trained on how to uh, greet customers, help people. And in order, that helps me in my personal business today when I deal with customers, when I deal with sales, when I deal with uh, making cold calls, and all of those skills and things that I was involved in the technical center help me relate to what I do every day with my business right now here at Double T Farms. I know a lot of people that have four-year degrees that still live with their parents, don't have a job, don't even have any idea where they're going to get a job because they have a degree in art or something else that ha doesn't even pertain to our area or our way of life around here. I highly suggest going to the Technical Center, get, get a trade that you can take anywhere in the U.S. Welding, you know, uh, criminal justice. You can use that in any state in the 50 United States. My greatest piece of advice is that if you are able to go to Panhandle Technical College while your, your last year in high school or right thereafter, they have a lot of programs. Some of them are not only but a year long and you think a year, that's a really long time. It's really not. When you can obtain some type of certification um, to have a job where you're making more than minimum wage to get you through college or to further your career, you know, you start out at a base level with that technical certificate, it'll help you so much more in the long run. I wish I would have done the pharmacy tech program right after, you know, high school and, you know, to, to get me through pharmacy school. Community colleges are in the ideal position to provide over 70% of tomorrow's workforce with an education combined with applied technical skills, industry-driven credentials, and specific preparation for employment. Being a skilled craftsman or technician is highly valued. Investments in career education programs in high schools and community colleges will help all students obtain an education which includes technical training and preparation for the workplace. Ultimately, this is how all students can be successful. In the new economy, both education and technical skills are the new currency. Will you be ready? My name is Misty Sasser. I'm a 2013 graduate from the Patient Care Technician Program at Florida Panhandle Technical College. What are you waiting for? 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 <laughs>